Yo, let's get it started today. I wanted to talk about sedation dentistry and why it has changed my practice forever. Guys, this is Dr. Rana here, giving clinical tips and sharing my journey as a dentist. Just recently moved to Florida to start my career and I'm loving my job every single day. However, I do encounter these patients that are extremely phobic and extremely anxious. And today I have the solution to help these patients get the care they deserve. And I'm talking about sedation dentistry. What is that and why is it so important? How has that changed my day-to-day -day practice? Well, the statistics are very clear, guys. So many patients have dental phobia and dental fear. Actually, a recent study said that about a third of the population has some form of fear towards the dentist and getting dental treatment done. As a new grad, I'm always thinking about how I can expand my access to care and how I can help more people given the amount of time we have in our day-to-day -day lives. And once I've gotten introduced to sedation dentistry, everything changed for me. My procedures have become more predictable, easier for the patient, more comfortable to do. A recent study showed that about 36% of the people in the United States have a fear of dental treatment, with 12% having an extreme fear. About 3% of adults in industrialized countries may develop dental phobia and avoid going to the dentist at all. Also, fear of dentists is more common in females than in males. Another research study done by Dentavox stated that out of an 18,000% Population samples, 61% of respondents said they're suffering from dental fear. Of this large sample size, almost 4% of them have said they've never been to a dentist. 39% of people said that they're afraid of pain. 24% of people say that they don't like the smell of chemicals. And 21% say they don't like the sound of the drill. 5% of that population didn't like to keep their mouth open for a long time. And about 4.6% said that they're afraid of the financial burden of the dental treatment they'd be getting. So you may be asking, what is sedation dentistry? It's when we as dentists offer sedatives and anxiolytics to help patients in an anxious environment or when they really can't get into the chair and sit down comfortably so we can do the work on them. For me, I call it a twilight sedation and that's when they take the sedative and it's a very relaxing environment where they're not too deeply into the sedation and they're also awake and conscious of what's going on but they're just super chill and it's the perfect happy medium for our patients to get dentistry done. There's several different types of sedation, right? There's minimal sedation where you're fully awake and you're just a little chill. It's almost like a glass of wine. For me, this is like nitrous. Nitrous oxide, laughing gas. Patients love it. They love blasting that thing up and feeling like they're on the moon. I enjoy it every now and then, but for me personally, I had a terrible reaction to this once when I got my wisdom teeth taken out. It felt like I was in some weird, twisted nightmare and I, I would never do it anymore. The next one is moderate sedation. And for me, this is that gold standard, that perfect mix of a little bit of a deeper sedation than the minimal with the gas. This is what I use for triazolam and diazepam. It gets that patient in a much more comfortable state than just the nitrous. I like using it because this is sometimes amnesic for our patients where they don't really recall the procedure. It's great when it's a much more advanced procedure like wisdom teeth or tori removal. You wouldn't really want to remember these kinds of things as a patient. And a lot of the times when I ask them how the procedure went the next day for a post-op, they said it was the time of their life and they had a great time doing it. And it's a real benefit to be able to offer this for our patients, especially in a really safe environment with moderate sedation. Moderate sedation is still called conscious sedation. They're awake, but their words may be slurred and they're still aware of what's going on. It's the perfect mix because it's not fully into deep sedation where an oral surgeon would come in and put a line in your bloodlines and then being able to administer propofol and deeper sedatives to have you really, really completely sedated. So this is what I practice mostly. It's oral conscious sedation. It's really beneficial to our patients and it really gives them the care they deserve. Nitrous is good because after the procedure is done, we can give you 100% O2 while you're just breathing in oxygen and then you're even able to drive home after, which is a huge benefit of nitrous. And I recently did nitrous on a patient of mine and he left the dopest review. He said, put the music on, blasted up the nitrous, and everything after was done. It was an amazing time for him. And he said, check it off your bucket list to get your teeth fixed by Dr. Rana. That review was so dope for me. I felt amazing. I really felt like I made an impact on my patient that day. 
And it's these little moments as dentists that we take home and we're so prideful for. So that made me feel really good. Next, let's talk about my go-to favorite, oral conscious sedation. This is when a dentist administers a pill, typically Halcyon or Valium the night before, where the patient takes it an hour before the procedure and it puts them in a deeper state of sedation. Now the patients may feel groggy, their words might start slurring, and they are definitely much more comfortable and relaxed to get bigger procedures done for longer periods of time. I'm talking full mouth extraction, I'm talking implant procedures, I'm talking large crown and bridge with restorative, appointments that are lasting about two hours, three hours at a time, where a patient may feel really uncomfortable to sit there that long and get the work done while their mouth is wide open. What I love about this route of sedation is that the patient's awake, the patient's aware of what's going on, a slight nudge and then they understand, hey, can you move your head this way? Hey, how are you doing? They can respond to me and they're aware of what's actually happening, but it's also amnesic, so they don't really recall much of it. I remember doing massive Torah removals and full mouth extractions and asking the patient how it was the next day and they said it was good. It wasn't a bad experience for them after drilling into their bones and taking their teeth out, for somebody to tell me that they had a good experience, this is really effective treatment, guys, and it's a real benefit to your patients. I strongly advise to get the DOC certification to be able to be qualified and trained on how to monitor these patients in these dental settings. Now, the one downside to oral conscious sedation or moderate sedation is that it does make you feel groggy and it's not safe for you to drive home or to the appointment itself. So you at least need a friend or a family member to get you to that appointment and get you home safely and watch you for a few hours after the procedure is done. So you may be wondering who needs sedation dentistry? Is it for everybody? And is it the safest thing to do? Well, typically patients who have a bad gag reflex, patients who have severe phobia or anxiety, patients who can't keep their mouth open for a very long time, or patients who have a lot of work needed to be done, are all great candidates for oral conscious sedation. I got a case coming up that I'm doing wisdom teeth on a 36 year old with Down syndrome. And I'm gonna offer him the Halcyon and Valium combination because it'll keep him more comfortable in the chair, it'll have him more relaxed, and I'll be able to work much quicker without him moving too much in the chair and freaking out. Now there's definitely times to refer out guys, don't get me wrong. If a patient's freaking out, shaking in the chair with the idea of getting a filling or one tooth pulled out, I'm referring them to the oral surgeon so they get into a deeper state of sedation with IV sedation. IV sedation is a great option for patients who need a deeper level of sedation. And this is typically when an oral surgeon would come in and place a line in your blood and push medications through like ketamine, propofol, midazolam. These are faster acting drugs that have faster reversal times to get procedures done much quicker for our patients. And actually I have thought about getting an IV sedation certification, but something about it rubs me the wrong way when there's an opportunity for a general dentist with very minimal medical training to observe patients under deeper sedation. So I think personally, I'm gonna stay away from it. I'm gonna leave that up to the oral surgeon or medical doctors to sedate patients in a much deeper state. So sedation can be offered in a variety of different ways. I can use the gas, I can use the pills. Sometimes I could even combine both of them to give the patient a deeper level of sedation. However, it's not really my go-to and I'm not the biggest fan of nitrous personally. And I'll tell you why I don't like nitrous that much. Having that hood on a patient is the biggest obstacle. It's like having a building on somebody's face that you're trying to maneuver around, especially when you're doing bigger cases like full mouth surgeries, implants, and full mouth crown and bridge. So if there's ever anything that's hindering my speed and my clinical efficiency, then I'm typically shying away from that. And for me, working around that massive pyramid on their nose is gonna be a huge struggle for me all the time. And I know it works on a lot of my patients, but I prefer to use the other route of administration, which is strictly the sedatives, the oral conscious sedatives, because they work better and I have a better field of view and I can work much quicker around the patient to get the care they need. To be able to administer these levels of sedation, please guys get certified, take the courses and do the right thing for your patients. For me, I did docs, 
oral conscious sedation certification and it has changed my practice for my life and it's a wonderful course. I learned so much about the protocols and how to take care and manage our patients under deeper levels of sedation. So yes guys, I am making a video about my sedation protocols, but please get certified and get the proper training because sedation can have pretty serious complications and risks for your patient. So as always, this is just my protocol. Please don't take it as the standard protocol to be using on your patients without the proper training. And for me doing oral conscious sedation, I'm always sedating patients who are ASA1, ASA2, or otherwise generally healthy people that can get their sedation in a very safe manner. If I'm ever looking at a patient who's over 65 and I'm just thinking, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, I'm not doing it. I'm always either giving them IV sedation with the oral surgeon or I'm just not offering the sedation for them. It's very important to understand the protocols of how to keep a patient safe by understanding ASA classifications. So let's talk about Dr. Rana's sedation protocol. For me, I'm typically giving five to 10 milligrams of Valium or diazepam the night before and the patient is not gonna eat after. Then I am administering Halcyon, whether it be 0.25 milligrams of triazolam or 0.5 milligrams of triazolam, one hour before the procedure, I'm crushing it up and I'm administering this sublingually for the fastest route of administration. This is what I was taught in Doc's course and it really has helped me get faster delivery of the sedative and get the patients in a much better state of mind for me to work on them. Guys, Halcyon is the holy grail of sedatives. It is super safe. I've read in the course where he mentioned the lethal dose of Halcyon is about 22,000 pills. That sounds insane, but it's also amazing that it's incredibly safe for our patients and it's a great way to keep the environment nice and calm when you don't have much to worry about. However, I am putting our patients on the pulse oximeter. I'm making sure I'm monitoring heart rate, breathing rate, things like that to make sure they're safe as possible while I'm getting this work done for them. So I wanna tell you how sedation dentistry has changed my clinical practice. I'm able to deliver more care to more patients. I can give longer treatments done in a more comfortable setting for my patients. They're more relaxed. Sometimes they don't remember the procedure, which can be beneficial when we're doing bigger cases. Patients aren't moving as much in the chair. They're not freaking out. They're not crying. They're not screaming. Patients are having a better experience at the dentist. And I'll take it upon myself for each and every patient interaction to be able to reshape the narrative and create a new stigma towards dentistry, one that's positive, one that shows patients that it's an okay place to be. It's a fun place to be. It can be a place where you want to go to get care and it shouldn't be a place that you're afraid of because that is really a big barrier of care that a lot of our patients face. I know this video was about sedatives, so if you like this video and you found it to be chill, please like and subscribe, share this video with a friend, somebody who's going through dentistry and having a tough time treating anxious and phobic patients. Leave a comment down below if you are a dental student afraid of treating anxious patients. Have you ever had an experience with an anxious patient and realize how difficult it can be on the other end? If you're a dental patient, let me know how your experiences have been. Have you ever thought about sedation dentistry? Because it can make a real positive impact on you. And if you're a dentist, let me know if you've ever done sedation dentistry. How has that impacted your clinical practice? Leave comments down below. Please reach out to me on Instagram if you'd like to have a conversation about this. Like and subscribe. Please, as always, guys, take care and enjoy yourselves.